Okay, so this is where we were uh, yesterday. So I hope that for all of you, uh, the basics are working. Uh, you are able to make uh, this stretch three and micro bit more extension work. I'm working, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it is working and that's, you know, we are going to continue with that. If you have a problem, then during the break, you can ask me or ask uh, some other, your colleagues. Okay. Uh, so I'm saying, just to repeat, this is what we were doing yesterday. So, you know, whenever I will touch A and B, my, my sprite will move. So, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pressing B and it is going here and I'm pressing A, it's going like this. So what, what, what we are looking at here is how to control scratch with micro bit. <clears throat> so let's add one more sensor. So right now I'm going to add a sensor, which is an onboard sensor. So I'm not connect connecting any external sensor to micro bit. I am going to use the light sensor, which is on the board itself. Uh, so if you go to micro bit more, you will see that it has some, uh, you know, uh, variables, like uh, there are kind of variables in the sense that they are already pre-built. So for example, I already have something for light intensity. So if I select light intensity, I immediately get it like a scratch variable. And it shows me that the amount of light falling on my micro bit is right now 71.4. Okay, um, so let me just run this in parallel. Okay, so So now you can see the light intensity here, it's become zero and then 70. So as I bring it closer, so I'm saying that there are some things which are already built in. So we don't even have to do anything. They, they have already given us light intensity. They've given us temperature. So temperature right now is saying room temperature is 34 degrees Celsius. Okay. Uh, so angle with North. This will not work right now because you have to calibrate the compass. Okay. But you will get pitch. So pitch and roll are the way you turn the micro bit. Okay. Um, so you will get pitch roll. You will also get sound level. So let me switch off these. So sound level. Okay. Uh, magnetic force again will not work right now because you have to calibrate the compass. So this is a very interesting uh, thing about micro bit. Uh, this is another uh, sensor in the micro bit, uh, which is a compass, and you have to calibrate it so that uh, it calib gets calibrated with the you know Earth's magnetic field. And once you have calibrated that, then if you bring a, a, a magnet, uh, I have a magnet inside uh, inside this one. If you'll bring a magnet, it will detect the magnetic field. Okay. But I mean, you have to calibrate it first. I'm not doing this right now, but it is a very interesting sensor because, uh, you can do many projects based on, you know, earth's magnetic field and the compass and this uh, magnetic force. Okay. So right now we are just going to use the light intensity. So what we are going to do is let's write a program. Uh, so let's put another some other condition so let's let's think of something so maybe i'm telling a story where i have this uh, you know sprite and this sprite i can move left and right now i want some backdrop and this is really your imagination we are trying to make a interactive story so i'm saying let's let's say the default is uh, this one so what i'm planning is that when we will shine some light on the micro bit the backdrop will change so we are making some sort of an interactive story, which, which can have, or a game, which can have two modes. So dark mode and light mode and the dark mode and light mode will depend upon the light falling on the micro bit. So to program this, I'm going to go into backdrops and I'm going to say, um, uh, the same thing, control, 
I'm going to get a conditional statement. And then I'm going to go micro bit. So we are looking at light intensity. So I'm getting light intensity. Think of it like a variable. And then from my control uh, events, I'm saying when green flag clicked and from operators, I'm saying, so this is what is happening right now. The light intensity falling uh, on the micro bit right now is around 70. And when I'm putting my hand on it, it drops to almost zero. So I'm going to get one less than operator here. And I'm going to say, if light intensity, let's say is less than 50, then I want to change the backdrop. So I go here and I say, switch the backdrop and I can add a new backdrop and I want some night backdrop. So let's say this one. So I'm saying, if it is this, then make it a uh, night city. Okay. So now I'm saying this is your regular scratch knowledge. So we are making this conditional statement where we are saying the backdrop is dependent upon the light intensity. So to make this, then I'm, I'm going, I'm actually going to get an if then else statement. And I'm saying if light intensity is less than 50, switch backdrop to night city, else switch it to blue sky. Okay. So now, uh, Oh, sorry. I also have to put it in a forever loop. Uh, so let me just show you. So basically when I, uh, I want to run it in parallel, but just believe me right now that if I have my hand on, on the micro bit, the light intensity is zero. So I have this. And when I remove my hand, the light in intensity goes up. And so I get this, I just want to show you in parallel. Uh, okay. So it is as simple as, as, as this, right. That, um, you just, so like that, I'm saying whatever sensor you have, uh, on the micro bit, you can use that. And then it's your imagination, what you want to do, uh, you know, with that, like yesterday I showed you some external sensors and with the external sensors, we could, you know, do, uh, like water sensor. So if I put water on, on the raindrop sensor, my, uh, there will be rain in my scratch program. Okay. So I'm saying like that, I can, I, that story is then up to me. What is that? Whatever is my imagination. So I'm go just going to show you, um, another sensor. And then I'm saying, uh, then we will take a break and you can try it, uh, and also have your breakfast and all that, uh, and try any of this. So I'm saying, if you, uh, what I'm trying to explain is that I can control many things, uh, in scratch using my micro bit. So I showed you the buttons. So anything physical like a button or for example, the tilt sensor. So I can also use the tilt because I've got a tilt here that when, when, uh, or, you know, even this one, okay, let's make, make this one. This is a very simple one when logo is touched. Okay. So in micro bit version two, this logo is a touch sensor. So I'm saying when logo is touched, let's say I go to sound and I I'm saying play sound meow. Okay. And now when I touch the sensor, okay. So, uh, so this is what I'm saying. It's, it's an interactive story and you know, this is like children can have fun because now the uh, something inside the computer is being operated by something outside the computer. And I think that's what makes it interactive. So I can also make some sort of a, uh, a digital painting here uh, in which I can say that, you know, my painting will change based on what you do to the sensor. So I could have some painting and I could say, when I, you know, stop the light, something will happen in my digital painting. Okay. Uh, so like that, so I'm saying any button 
uh, or any sensor that is on the micro bit you can you can you know bring it out and then like when shake so it's simple when shake then you you decide what you want to do and that's where your imagination comes in that if on shake i want the cat to jump then i know that i have to go on motion and i have to say change y right so if i change y by i mean to make some a sprite jump and come down all you have to do is uh, you know change y by see so every time i say change y by 10 it goes up and if i say change y by minus 10 it will come down right so it goes up comes down now once you understand this you, you just have to write a small program so i can go in control and i can say repeat um, when shake maybe just uh, some put some weight uh, sorry i should have so change y by by minus 10 then change y by 10 and i can maybe put it in a you know loop maybe one time or something so so when i so i'm also touching the sensor by mistake so i'm saying i'm doing this shake and this shake is what is determining uh, my uh my cat jumping i mean i've made it very this should be very little like the weight should be just 0.1 or something uh, so you can play around with it so my point is that whatever is there on the micro bit you can use your imagination to say when button a is pressed or when logo is touched and it's not just logo it's you will get all the pins so i can also i can put something on logo touch but then i can also say when when pin 0 is touched do something else uh, and like that, I'm saying shake, shake has so many things, tilt up, tilt left, tilt down. So I can use any of these. And so these are pre-made blocks or if you have something else like acceleration here, uh, then I'm saying you'll have to write a conditional statement like this. So I'm saying instead of this, I can put something here. Uh, I will have to put a, some equality operator here. And I can then say if acceleration is less than greater than do something. Uh, so I hope you understand what I'm saying that any of this, any of these things here, you can play around and based on what's happening on the micro bit, things in scratch will change. Okay. So I'm just going to take a pause for a minute. If you have any questions, please ask. Okay, so if you don't have any other questions there, then let's let's get on with. So we have done uh, internal sensors or onboard sensors of the micro bit. So next, I'm going to do uh, external sensors. Okay, uh, and like I said, external sensors broadly we can divide them into two categories. We've got analog sensors, which basically means that these sensors will generate a signal which is a analog signal. And then you've got other sensors like let's say the PIR sensor, and this will generate a digital signal as the output. Okay. So what's the difference between um, a digital and analog uh, signal? So let's just spend a couple of minutes understanding that. Uh, so all of electronics, you know, will be like this, right? So the, the signal that is out, if I'm saying, if it's an analog signal, Okay, then analog is like volume, you know, so if you imagine something volume and I'm increasing the volume, I can increase the volume in very small increments, like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 2, 2.7, 2.8, 3.8, whatever. So I'm saying the signal is, is a very continuous signal. Okay, so if it's a continuous signal, the voltage change is continuous. And this is what I was explaining yesterday that everything will be about voltage or current or resistance or conductivity or any of, of, of those basic, you know, fundamental features of electronics. Okay. So I'm saying this is a discrete signal. So it can go up, it can go down, it will cycle like this. So imagine a volume switch and I'm making the volume go higher or lower. It will work like this. Whereas a digital signal, the difference is that the digital signal will is a, is a very discrete signal. 
Okay, so digital signal is either on or off. So it will either be on or it will be off or it will be on or it will be off on off. Because this will be like in, in the case of microbit, it will be 3.3 volts because that's the uh, output of microbit. Okay, in the case of uh, Arduino, it will be 5 volt. So I'm saying, now you have to think about the sensor. So what I'm saying is that if I have any kind of a analog sensor, like let's say the soil sensor, then the signal that I'm going to get out from this will be like a continuous signal. Okay. Whereas if I have a digital signal, I will, I will have like my PIR sensor. This will output only a on or a off state. It will not have any other state in between. Okay. So here, what is happening is if you think about it, like in the circuit, the voltage may be changing from like, let's say one volt to 1.1 to 1.2 to 1.3 to 1.4, whatever. Whereas here it will, the, the voltage out coming out from this will either be on or it will be off. It will either be 3.3 or 5 volts or it will be zero volt. Okay. So now this is a very, uh, uh, you know, a, a fundamental difference between how we will have to deal with these sensors when we are going to attach it to our microbit or to Arduino. Okay. So this is like the basic thing to understand that this, some of the analog devices will give me a signal like this and the digital devices will give me a signal, which is a very discrete signal. Okay. So with that, let's, let's look at the sensor. So the good thing is that even though, uh, this is an analog, analog sensor, what they have done now is that you get this other, you know, uh, component with, with this. So these are just prods actually, this is not a sensor really. Prod, prod means it's just like, you know, something that we are uh, putting to feel whether there is moisture or not. Then whatever it is doing, we will connect this to our, uh, you know, this device, which comes with the sensor. Okay. And with this, once we have attached this device, it has some comparators or whatever, some, uh, you know, components built in such that now even a an analog sensor can give us both a digital out, which means a signal, which is either on or off or an analog signal, which will mean it will detect all the changes in the voltage. Okay. So it will give me a, a very continuous signal. So by using, uh, you know, this kind of a device with, with my analog sensor, I have the option and you will see, it may not be very clear here, but when you will, you will see that in the corner, it says VCC, which means you have to, con con you know, connect the voltage pin here. It says GND, which means the second one is you have to, you have to put a ground pin here. Then the third one is called DO. So DO means digital out. So if I use this pin, I know that I want this sensor to give me a digital signal, which means either it will be on or it will be off. And the last pin is called uh, uh, AO, which means analog out. So analog out means that the signal that this sensor will give me will be a continuous signal. So the change in voltage will be like, like I said, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, like that. Okay. And this is for, for, you know, um, all kinds of sensors, mostly you will get it for some sensors You don't get this. I'm, we will deal with them later, but I'm saying for most sensors, like the, um, uh, like the rain drop sensor that I was showing you yesterday, same principle. Okay. That with the raindrop sensor also, we will take this out. We will put this here. And now from my raindrop sensor, I will get both digital signal and analog signal. And it's for me to decide which one I want. So I'm going to show you both. So, uh, before we take a break in the next 10 minutes, I will just show you the soil sensor and then, uh, but what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter. I'm taking the soil sensor as an example. You can use raindrop sensor or any other analog sensor for which this converter is there for uh, with us. Then there are some sensors where you don't have the converter and then you have to create a voltage divider, but we will not look at that right now. We will just look, keep it simple. And once I have this, then it becomes very simple for me to operate this device. Okay. Uh, so all I have to do is attach some pin uh, wires here and connect it to my 
माइक्रोबेट so what i'm doing is i have the pin here called vcc so i'm putting this orange wire in 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 um, okay i'll not use these so i'm i'm using wires which uh, you know on this side have a female and on this side have a alligator clip it just makes life simpler to uh, you know attach it to the micro bit and i'm saying this because like i have made many of these like i have i have you know soldered i, I have taken two different types of wires okay so i have taken like the male pin here and the alligator wire and i have soldered it okay i'm saying i've done this because it just saves time otherwise you will keep struggling connecting different types of components so if when you have time or you know like get your class 11 students to do this for you okay um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect a vcc pin so vcc pin i'm connecting vcc to 3 volt then i have my gnd pin okay and i'm connecting my gnd to the ground of the micro bit so vcc to 3 volts and gnd to ground and then i have a third pin so right now i'm going to use the ao out which means i am using the analog out okay and ao i am putting let's say on pin 0 okay so i'm just repeating it all i have done is i have taken the soil sensor i have taken attached it to this uh, component and then i have connected the vcc to the 3 3 volt gnd to the ground and signal ao analog out to pin 0 of the micro bit okay so this is my hardware setting and i'm saying instead of this sensor you can use any other sensor which has a similar out and you can it will be the same configuration okay and after this now let's go to scratch so i am connecting something to a pin 0 and i am expecting a analog signal out because that is where i have connected it on the soil sensor so if i go down i have something here which says the read the analog value of pin pin 0 okay if i had set it to digital pin then i would have to use this one which says is pin 0 high or low because if if my sensor is outputting a digital signal it can only be high or low it can only be on or off so that's when i i can use this this programming block but because i have put the analog sensor i have to use the read this analog value of the pin and then in micro bit if i just want to see the if i just click on it it is showing me the analog value of the pin okay so it's 97.1 okay so now see that uh the i wanted to show you both things together so anyway so this is 96.6 when my sensor is not is not in water okay now i'm going to put my sensor inside the water and then if i see the value the value has come to 35 so i i'm saying doesn't matter which analog sensor you are using the logic will be the same that you will need these two basic reading so once when i have the sensor in water my reading is uh, approximately around 35 let's say less than 35 okay and now when i'm taking this out and i should just dry it up a little then if i see the value the value is almost 98 99 okay so i'm saying now once you've got these two values 
uh, we can write some program. Okay, again, we can, it, it's the, that kind of logic is the same. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say when green flag clicked, control, I'm going to get uh, if then else, and I'm going to get an operator. And uh, so I know that if the value of the pin is, let's say, less than 40, which means when was I getting a value less than 40? When my uh, uh, soil sensor was inside the water. So that means when it's inside the water, uh, let's say this is the plant. So if it's inside the water, I'm happy. Nothing, nothing is to be done. Okay. So maybe I can just go on micro bit and I can, you know, show some, something I'm making it simple right now. Show a heart. So if the plant is nicely watered, show a heart. And if the plant is not nicely watered, then, you know, let's say something else. So we can change the pattern. I'm just putting a, a cross. Okay. And then I have to put this in a forever loop. Okay. So I've written a very simple program. If you know, forever check the value of the analog, uh, check the value of analog value of the pin zero, which means the pin, which is connected to my soil sensor continuously forever. Keep checking the value. If the value is less than uh, 40, then show me a heart. If not, then show me a cross. Okay, so we can test this now. Sorry, I should uh, just green flag clicked. So when I have clicked the green flag, I've got a cross. Uh, like I said, the lights flash because of the camera, but it's a you know proper cross. And when I will put it in the water, it will take, so the sensors take around 30 seconds to stabilize. Okay. So don't be in a hurry. It'll the first time you'll do it. It'll take around 30 seconds. So once I have done this, I think I just shorted the thing. Oh. So what you were saying happened right now, I, it, it got disconnected. So I have to reconnect. pair and then let me just start it again. Okay. So now I, again, I have the cross and then if I put this inside, it just give it some time and sometimes it's also possible that if it's not changing, uh, so in first time, the sensor takes around 30 seconds to stabilize. Okay. So once it's in water, I've got a heart there. And when I'll take it out, it becomes a cross. And when I put it in, it will become a heart. Okay. So I'm saying this is how simple it is to use, use a sensor, uh, an analog sensor. And then it, it is your imagination. So what, what we are going to do is we are going to take a break now, but what, what I want you to do is whatever sensor you have, whichever sensor you are carrying with, with you, maybe it's a, a MQ2 sensor, or, you know, if you can go and get the same soil sensor or, or, you know, uh, this raindrop sensor, these are simpler sensors to use. Try to do this. Okay. So, uh, what you can do is you can use some onboard sensors to control your, your scratch, or you can use some external sensors and I am only showing a pattern, but rest is your imagination. I can make like, if I go here in micro bit more, there is, there is a buzzer here. Okay. So I can say that when there is no water, play some tone. So then you will have some sort of alarm, which will be a soil sensor. And when you come back, I'm going to complete this project because I'm saying that we will, we will have some alarms and all these things. Plus we will also have a servo attached to this. So what we will do is when the water is, uh, when the uh, soil sensor is in the water, the servo will be in one side. And when it is not in water, it will be on another side, which basically means I'm trying to make a smart irrigation system where I'm saying that when water is low, my servo will turn and the water will start running. Imagine that. And when uh, uh, there is water in the plant, the servo will switch off the tap. So that is what we will do when you come back.
but uh, do try some uh, some of this internal sensor external sensor and control scratch with it and when when we come back then uh, we'll take it from there